Okay, now we'll start working on the uh, top. And as you can see here, this is really simple. Uh, it really has no detail at all. Okay, so let's go back into the top view here. And let's grab another cylinder. And let's drag that out in the center. Something like that. We'll give it a little bit of height. And then we'll just uh, get it in position here. So we'll move it up in the front view. And let's just put that right on top. Okay, and we'll come down enough to cover up this uh, edge here. Okay, let's take off the height segments. And we'll take the sides up to, say, 60. And we don't need any uh, cap segments on this. Okay. Let's maybe take the radius up slightly. Let's do maybe 8.6. Okay. So I'll do 8.6 on the radius and say uh, two and a half on the height. And we'll cut the steadable poly as well. Let's grab the top and uh, bottom polygons here. Okay, and then we'll control click edge. And we'll just chamfer these down a bit. Okay, we want this to be pretty rounded out, so we'll probably have to do a double chamfer here. Let's take this down a bit. Let's do maybe 0.65 on the first one and hit apply, and we'll bring the second one down. Okay, and maybe 0.23 or so on the second one, and okay. We'll see how that looks. Okay. And let's smooth this out a bit with some smoothing groups as well. So let's go into Polygon. We'll select all the polys. Let's turn on our back facing here. We'll deselect the top and bottom polys. So we just have all the side ones. And we'll just put this on a group here. So let's do like one. Okay. And let's grab the top face here. And you can see that uh, if you don't have the shading on here, it's kind of weird again. So. With that selected, we'll just uh, take off the smoothing group, and we'll do the same on the bottom. Take the smoothing group off of that, okay? And that should look better. Okay. So we'll just name this, and let's call it column top maybe 01. Right, and the last piece of the column is another box uh, shape at the top here. So we can pretty much just use the, the block we already modeled at the bottom to uh, make that piece. Okay, so let's grab it down here. And in the front view, we'll just hold shift and drag a copy up on the Y to the top. And choose copy and OK. All right, and we'll just push this down so it's slightly intersecting it. Maybe about there or so. Okay. And let's see here. It looks like it might be a slight bit thinner than uh, the base ones. So let's just uh, shrink it down a bit. We'll go into vertex. Grab the top verts here. Make sure you have ignore back facing unchecked. And we'll just bring that down a bit just to thin it up. Okay. So just like that. And I think that looks pretty good for the column. Let's maybe make the box a little bit smaller. You can see this one uh, pretty much comes right to the edge of uh, the cylinder piece up there. Ours is a little bit bigger, so we'll just scale it down slightly. Okay, and let's do that in top view. Okay, so we'll just scale down a little bit. Okay, so that is pretty much the same uh, size as the uh, top of the, the column there. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, just like that. 
So now we need to just uh, make our copies here. Right, and to do that, we're just going to select all the pieces of the column. So we'll hit H on the keyboard, okay, to open up the Select Objects dialog. And if you uh, want to, you can also use the button up at the top here to open that up. Okay, so let's select all the column pieces here. All right, and we'll group this. And we'll just call that column 01. And then we'll go into the Hierarchy tab here. Hit Effect Pivot only. We'll hit Center to Object just to be sure. And with the button still turned on here, we're going to right click the Move tool and we're going to zero out the X and Y spinners again. Okay, so that the pivot point for the group will be right at the center of our uh, stairs here. Right. So with that, then we'll close the box and turn off the button. And we're going to use the Array tool to create the copies here. So we'll go into the top view. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Okay, and just make sure that the pivot point is in the center. Right, and with the column selected, we'll go up to Tools, down to Array, right, and we're going to do a rotation total here. So we'll hit the uh, arrow button here for Rotate, and for the Z-axis here, we'll hit 360 in there, because we want it to go around in the full circle. And then over here, we're going to do Copy, and we want to have eight of these. So let's take the count down to eight and hit Preview. Okay, and then we can hit OK, because everything looks like it worked. Right. And that'll give us our eight uh, columns, and they'll all be perfectly uh, spaced apart. Okay, so that uh, really makes that easy to do. And another thing to keep in mind is uh, I'm not going to be covering the mapping or texturing in this particular tutorial, but um, if you're going to be doing mapping on yours, you'd want to map all of your uh, pieces of the first column, right? So you'd want to do all the UVs before you start making uh, copies. Uh, that'll save you a lot of time later on. You won't have to come back and either replace uh, each column with a mapped one or just uh, have to actually unwrap each uh, piece of each column, which can take forever. So always do your UVs before you start making uh, clones. All right? As long as you've got the uh, piece finalized and you don't want to make any changes to it. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're working with uh, something that has a bunch of copies. So let's take another look at the reference here. And we'll get started on the top. Uh, you can see this has quite a bit of detail uh, on the outside. And I think just to make things easy, we'll probably make this out of a few separate uh, pieces. Okay, so we'll start out with this ring going around here. Okay, and you can see it's a little bit narrower than the uh, block at the top. It actually is uh, tucked in on both sides. Okay, so we'll do that out of uh, a tube, I think, here. Let's go to the top view and actually let's. Let's grab our column groups here and we'll just go up to group and ungroup them. Okay, and then we'll just select the uh, tops and the columns and then we're just going to right click and hide unselect it. Okay, just so we can see the actual width of the uh, top uh, blocks here without the bottom in there. So let's go into the create panel and we'll grab a tube and let's just draw that out. Give it a little bit of uh, width and a little bit of height and let's also uh, center it on X and Y and we'll uh, dump the height segments, segments here and let's take the sides up to like 70 again and we'll just figure out how uh, big we need this let's do maybe 78 on the first radius and we'll do 65 on the second and let's just do maybe 2.5 for a height okay we'll see if that looks about right let's move it up to the top okay, and we'll just set it right on top okay I think that's about the right size All right let's convert this to edible poly and we'll just chamfer down some of the edges here. Okay, so let's grab an edge on the outside. We'll do a ring and a loop. Okay, and we'll just chamfer all four uh, loops at the same time. We'll do this pretty sharp. Let's do maybe 0.2 or so on it and okay. And we have this piece here that goes around and it's actually a little bit uh, smaller. Then the uh, bottom ring here, you can see it's kind of tucked in. 
as well as on the inside. All right, so we'll make that out of a separate tube. We could extrude it out of the top, but just to make things easier, I think we'll just make it out of a separate object here. All right, so let's grab another tube. And we'll just repeat the same process here. Okay, and a little bit of height and center it on X and Y. And let's move it up. Whoops. Right, and we'll just bring it down so it's uh, slightly intersecting the bottom one there. And for the radius on this one, let's do maybe 75.5 and maybe 66. Actually, let's do 65. 64. Oh, we're going the wrong way. Let's take it out. 67. That's what we want. Okay, and for the height, we'll just do something like 10. And we can adjust it uh, if we need to. Okay, let's maybe take the height up a little bit more. Let's do maybe 11.5. Uh, I think that's about the right size, so we'll convert this to edible poly as well. And let's go to edge, grab an edge on the top, and let's go into wireframe of F3. We'll grab one of the bottom edges, okay, and we'll do a ring, and control click polygon. Okay, so we have the uh, polygons on the top and bottom selected, and we'll just delete those. We really don't need to have them in there. Okay. And I'm just going to change the color of this. Okay, so I think that looks about right for that part. We'll start working on this top detail. Okay, and we're going to do this, uh, I think, the similar way to we did the, uh, the stand here for the fountain. I think we'll do it out of uh, extreme bevel rather than doing it out of a spline. So let's go into the top view again. And we want this to come out a little bit past... Uh, this bottom one here, you can see it's a little bit farther out here. Okay, so we'll make our cylinder a little bit bigger. Let's grab another one here and draw it out. Okay, we'll come out a little bit farther. All right, and we'll give it a little bit of height. And let's move it into position. Okay, we'll just park it right there. And let's also center it. X and Y. Take off the height segments here. And we'll take the sides up to 70. Okay, and we'll just figure out if that's about the uh, right size. Could probably bring the radius down slightly. Let's do, say, 82 on the radius. And we'll take the height way down as well. Okay, we'll start out pretty thin here and we'll just work our way up. Let's do maybe two for the height. And we don't need any cap segments, no height segments in 70 sides. Okay, so let's convert this to edible mesh. Let's go into polygon here and we'll select the top one. And in the front view, let's zoom in a bit on this. And let's extrude the top out a bit. Let's come up a little bit and we'll do a bevel. Okay, just bring that out a little bit. And with the move tool, we'll just pull that face down so it's flat. All right, to give us a little bit of a 90 degree angle there. And we'll do another extrude. Okay, maybe something like that. And another one. And bevel this one out a little bit more. Okay, and we'll pull that down until it's flat. And extrude again. We'll come up a little bit higher on this one. Okay, maybe like that. And we'll do another one. Okay, and we'll bevel this one out. Let's do maybe something like that. And one more extrude. Okay. 
So just like that. We'll see if that looks about right. Okay, and it's not going to match it exactly, but it's close enough. You'll never really uh, notice, okay, unless you're going to compare the model to a reference picture. Okay, so that's probably close enough. And you can add a little bit more detail in there if you want to, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I uh, think I'll leave it like this. Okay, so we'll convert this to editable poly. And let's maybe just knock some of these edges off a little bit. Okay, so we'll zoom in here. And let's see, let's grab maybe this one here. Okay, we'll do a loop on that. So this edge right here. And I think we'll just roll this one over a little bit more. Okay, so we'll do a chamfer. Bring that down a bit. Let's do maybe 0.4 on it. And let's hit apply and we'll bring it down a little bit more. Do 0.15 on the second one, just so it's a bit of a smooth rollover. Okay, so it doesn't look so uh, blocky. Okay, and let's get this one here as well. Do a loop on that. And we'll just chamfer that down a little bit. Let's do maybe 0.15 as well. And okay. And let's get this one up here. Chamfer that down. And we'll take this down a little bit more to keep it uh, sharp. Let's do maybe 0.08. And OK. And this one here. Uh, we'll see if we can roll this out a little bit to get uh, kind of a smooth corner on it. OK, so we'll do another chamfer. Take it up a little bit. Let's do maybe 0 uh, 0.45. Hit apply. And do a second one there. OK, and we'll do that 0 0.2 just so we have a, a nice rollover. OK. And let's see. Let's go to Polygon, we'll grab the bottom poly, okay, and then we'll control click edge, and we'll just knock this one off uh, a little bit as well. Okay, so we'll take that up slightly. Let's do maybe 0.3 on it, and let's do apply, and we'll bring it down a little bit more. Maybe about 0.12 or so. Okay. And let's also do the top one while we're at it. So we'll just go back to poly, grab the top one, and control click edge. And we'll just chamfer that down. We'll do that maybe 0.15. So it's pretty tight and OK. And let's see if that looks OK. We obviously still have the fauceting uh, on it, but we can take care of that in a minute. OK, so I think that's probably uh, good enough. We'll have some additional detail in uh, this section afterwards. So it should look fine. Okay, so let's smooth it out a bit. And let's see, let's go into edge. Let's grab this top one here. Okay, just the one on the side. We'll do a ring on it. Control click polygon. Okay, right, we'll go down to the bottom here. And if you want to turn off your polygon shading, you can do that with uh, F2. Okay, so we'll just put that on a smoothing group, say one. Okay, let's drop this down. We'll go back to edge here. Let's grab this one here. Let's do all these. Okay, so all the ones in this section here. Okay, we'll do another ring. Control click polygon. And let's put that on two maybe. Okay. And we'll leave the chamfered edges uh, for now. We might need to do some uh, down here. But we'll see how it looks. Okay, so we'll go back to edge. Grab one here. Ring. Control click polygon. Okay, we'll put that on three, and then we'll put this one on four, which it actually already is. Okay. Let's see. You can see that the uh, rollover here is pretty fauceted, so we'll do this one as well. So let's grab these edges here. Okay. And ring. And we'll put this on, say, 5. And we'll do the same thing for this bottom one here. Grab these three edges. Whoops. Do a ring. And we'll put that on 6. Okay. Alright, I might put this uh, chamfered edge here on one. One at the top here. 
Okay, just that one. So ring that. And we'll put that on seven. Okay, we'll see if that looks a little bit better. Okay. So that looks pretty smooth and we didn't lose our uh, hard edges. Okay. So let's change the color of this. And we'll just name it something like uh, top detail. Oops. Okay. Let's unhide all. And let's just make sure everything's centered. Okay. All right. So we're getting there. We still have to do uh, the roof, uh, which I think we'll do next. And then we have a couple of additional details to put in up here, as well as the fountain. And you can see the roof is uh, kind of domed over it. It doesn't really go up, it just kind of slopes in. All right, so I think the best way to do this will just be make it out of a sphere. All right, so let's go into the top view. And we'll go to the create panel and grab a sphere. And actually, before we do that, let's, let's maybe just select our top piece here and we'll hide unselect it, okay? Just so we can see the radius of it here in the top view. All right, so now we'll grab a sphere. Right, we'll bring that out and we want it to be pretty much the same uh, radius, just slightly smaller. Okay, let's also center it. So let's do a radius on this of maybe 86. Okay, and we'll leave it at 32 segments and let's move it up. Okay, so let's move it up there. Right, and let's go to scale and we're going to scale it down on the Y right, to squash it a bit. Let's do maybe something like maybe that. Okay, so that's 65 uh, scaled on the Y and you can see that down in the middle at the bottom there. Okay. Right, so we'll right click and convert this to a poly. And let's grab the bottom half and we'll delete it. Okay, and you can see this doesn't really have any faces that uh, go up and curve over. It kind of just goes right into it from uh, the side there, right? And ours is kind of going up and curving in. So let's delete the bottom uh, segment of this as well, right? Just so we have it uh, tapering in. All right, we'll just pull it down. All right, and just slightly intersect it with the roof. Okay. And we could probably make it a slight bit bigger. All right, so I'm just going to scale it out slightly. Uh, that might be a little too much. Let's undo that. Just something like that. All right, so it's slightly less uh, in radius than the outside here. Okay. Okay, I think that's about the same shape. And you can see here that this has a, uh, let's see if we can take a look at this at closer, uh, closer up. So you can see this is probably um, some kind of pounded metal roof here. And normally you could probably get something like this just out of a texture, but I think we'll actually model some of these uh, seams in here. Okay, and it's not going to look exactly the same as this, but we'll just uh, do something so it has some kind of uh, detail on top rather than just being perfectly smooth uh, like this. Okay, so what we'll do here is we're going to Polygon. And let's hide unselect it. Okay, we'll turn on ignore back facing. All right, we're just going to start at the bottom here. So we'll just select two polygons. Okay, so just grab two of them. Right, and let's see, let's go into bevel. Okay, we'll open that up. We're going to do local normal. All right, and we'll take the height way down here. Let's also take the outline uh, down as well. OK, 
Okay, we'll do say negative 0.2 on the outline and for the height let's do maybe 0.4 okay so I'll extrude that out for us so what we'll do now is just click on the next ones here we'll hit apply first and then we'll hold uh, click that one then we'll hold control and click on the one next to it okay so you got both of these extruding out all right so we have a seam between them all right, so we'll hit apply and then we'll click hold control and click again and hit apply and then click and hold control and click again and we'll just work our way around the base extruding these uh, out two at a time okay and uh, thanks to my brother Chris for uh, coming up with this technique uh, I was going to do it a different way but this is a lot simpler so credit to him for uh, suggesting this one Okay, so we'll just keep working around the bottom here, selecting two at a time, and hitting apply. Okay. And as I, you can see, that'll kind of give us the uh, almost shingle effect on there. All right. So we're just going to continue doing this all the way up to the top. All right, it'll take a little bit of time, but it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, and we also want to have these seams staggered. Okay, so they're not in a perfect uh, alignment. All right, so we'll come in here. We have a seam here. All right, so we'll grab a polygon here and here, and then we'll open up bevel again, and it'll still have the same settings in there. So we'll hit apply, and then we'll just keep moving along here. All right, and just take your time doing this. Okay, so just back to where we started here. All right, and that'll give us the, the staggered seams. Okay, so we'll just keep working one row at a time. All right, so for the third row here, we'll just uh, offset it again. All right, and bevel it out. And just keep moving. Okay. And we'll stagger the uh, next line as well. Whoops, let's undo that. Okay, and yeah, we'll just check that out. I think I might have actually double beveled that one. Let's undo that. Okay, and I think we'll do maybe one more row here. 
open the top. Okay, so we'll offset it again and keep moving. Okay, I think that's all the way. Let's just check it out here. Okay, and we actually missed one right here. All right, so what I'll do here is select this polygon and I'll grow it once and delete it. And then we'll go into border and we'll just select the border around that hole and cap it and then go back to polygon grab both those polys and do the bevel again and okay and that should fix it okay and for the top here I think we could probably just uh, maybe pull all these center ones out at the same time right so we'll go into the top view right we'll just select all the center ones here and we'll just bevel it out Okay, and let's maybe bring it up a slight bit higher. Do maybe 0.75 and let's see. Let's do maybe 0.1 or so on the uh, outline. Okay, we'll see if that looks okay. Okay, so just take your time on that. I know it's a little tedious. Alright, so let's just name this. We'll call it roof. And let's change the color. Okay, we'll throw the shader on there. And I think we might uh, leave this as is. I don't think we'll chamfer down the edges uh, just because we have uh, extra seams going down the middle of each of these tiles here. Alright, so if we did chamfer, you'd see an additional. Uh, hard edge running down the centers. Okay. So it'd take quite a bit of time to deselect edges and uh, just select the ones we'd want to chamfer. So I think we'll see if we can get away without doing any further work on it. Okay, so let's unhide all. Okay, and we'll just uh, hit Z here and see if that looks okay. Okay, I think that looks okay. Um, I guess we'll go with that for now, and if you need to change anything later on, we'll uh, do that then. Okay, so I think that'll take care of that. Next thing we'll do is start working on the uh, inset details around this piece.